you've been studying myths for a really long time, you've been reading them for a really long time. How is your process of uh, approaching them and maybe what you go in looking for evolve or change over the years? Well, you know, I realized that myths are a special way of knowledge which cannot be substituted with other things. You can ignore it, or if you follow it, it goes very far. And it goes very far in the direction of knowledge, as, in a way, as science or philosophy. It is, knowledge is made with, not only with concepts, not only with uh, experiments, it's made with stories, can be made of stories. And that was what, that is what I followed. And of course, at a certain moment, I started doing something which, in fact, has always been done in literature. So, retelling. In fact, literature is, from the beginning, a retelling. Homer is retelling stories which were well known around him. And even Shakespeare is retelling stories. He has not invented a single story himself. He always took the material somewhere in whatever he, he could find, chronicles, uh, stories, novellas, and so on. And so I started writing The uh, Marriage of Cadmus and Harmony. That was in the 80s. And that is my first book, which is specially connected with myths. One of, the, one of the things that you keep, you, you keep saying is that myths are a way of, in a, in a sense, a marriage of philosophy and poetry. They're a way of accessing um, a knowledge yeah. that, that, you know, of truth and reality, which is not accessible by other means. Um, would you illustrate that for me? Would you give me a couple of examples from any of the myths where, uh, this, is, where this comes across most vividly? Well, practically everywhere. If you... Let's take uh, an Indian example. The story of Prajapati, Rudra, Ushas, and uh, the gods, which is one of the most important myths in the Brahmanas. That is something which gives you the feeling of how the world is based on Well, first of all, on guilt, and second point on an act, a violent act happening. And this guilt is on one side, the guilt of the God himself, who creates the world. That is for the reason why Prajapati is punished by his own sons, who are the gods. Uh, that is like a wound in something which is a wound in fullness. So Prajapati uh, accepts to be dismembered in the world. And that, is, and that is a big wound which can be healed only, the Brahmanas say, the Brahmanas say, through the ritual. And uh, that is a kind of knowledge you get only through this story. Uh, otherwise, the ritual wouldn't have any meaning. And uh, so that's an example, but uh, you can have many others. Would you say there is a lot lost, lo lost in translation in the way uh, myths translate into religion, rituals, the way they are practiced in India? And of course, politics, which has, you know, it's possibly the only country which still bases large part of its right-wing politics on the interpretation of myth. Uh, I think there, there are large, large areas of big misunderstandings. And first of all, Hinduism, from Vedic India to Hindu India, there is a passage which is very mysterious and which has still to be explored. And that happens in the dividing line is one could say the fifth century before uh, before BC, 
And what happens afterwards is a huge uh, story with invasions, with the Muslim uh, coming. And so what is Hinduism today would be very difficult to say. And what I'm sad of is to see that very often there are people pretending to have such a contact with ancient rituals, practices, thoughts, but no corresponding knowledge of the texts and so on. So it's more a sort of uh, pretension. Have then. you faced any opposition from the right wing, either in Italy or in India, for your writings? Well, uh, I'm glad to say that in India, up to now, uh, and I had many public occasions in various, in various places, in Calcutta, in now in Chennai, last year in Cochin or in Delhi, uh, to have discussions with people, I had a very good impression of the audiences. They were very, very lively. They made very precise remarks, as you have seen here. And I don't remember really uh, uh, unpleasant occasion up to now.